What's going on, fine people of YouTube? Welcome back to the next part of our series. In the last part, let's see if I remember, we did something related to search. I think we put this together, and in this part, I wanted to start building out the uh, the search input view that'll show up here. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Don't forget to hit that like button down below. It helps out so, so, so much. Let me know in the comments if you've made it this far. Let me know what you're working on lately with Swift. Um, hopefully it's this Rick and Morty app, but that all said, let's jump into Xcode. So admittedly, I haven't touched this project in a few days, so let's see if I can even remember what we did. So it looks like we're in the uh, search controller here, and if I'm not mistaken, I wanted to build out the search views one by one. And the last one, ah, here's what we did. We put together the no results view, and we actually did hide it because we want to show that view um, you know, case by case if we don't actually have results. And I also tossed in the search button, which does absolutely nothing right now. So in this video, we're going to work on the search input view where we have a search bar and some dynamic options based on the context of what we're searching, be it character, be it episode, be it a location. So let's jump into our RM search input view. And there's a whole lot of nothing in here. So let's build it out. So first things first, we want to override the initializer. I don't know what that was, but we want to do init with frame. And we are going to lay this out with uh, some constraints. So we, of course, need to set that auto resizing uh, mask property. We'll need this required in it. Let's see what else we need. Uh, we are going to want to set some constraints. So I'll create this guy here and we want to spell it correctly. We'll also want to configure it with a view model. So I'll say configure with a view model. And I think we already created the type for this. It should have been the name plus the view model. And actually, here's a good lesson in naming consistency. Um, I totally don't remember if we made this, but I just kind of figured we did. And if I would have made it, I would have named it the name of the view plus view model. So, um, you know, kind of a good tip 101, name things appropriately, and you can kind of guess your way through your own code. So that's that. Let me set a background color on this guy. I'll make it, let's make it a different color. Let's do system pink. And let's jump back to our primary RM search view, which kind of encapsulates the entirety of this view controller's uh, view. And let's bring in this input view. So looks like I added a comment for myself. That was nice of me, earlier me. So we'll say private let uh, input view, let's lowercase that I. We'll just instantiate this. And let me get it added and add some constraints. So here we have add sub views. We added the no results view. I'll add this one as well. And in add constraints, I'm gonna move this down. This will be no results. I like sticking in comments for my own sanity sake. And let's go and uh, do this guy. And I'll kind of make these up as I go. So we'll say top anchor will be basically flush to the top of the view. So top anchor to top anchor, right and left will be the same. And then perhaps we'll give it a fixed height anchor. So here we'll have left, here we'll have right. This will be left. This will be right as well. And let's go ahead and do for this one height anchor and maybe we'll give it a constant. We'll see how it looks and we'll adjust accordingly. So uh, we do want some options and we wanna input bar, um, like a search bar as well. And assuming both are 50 and let's say like a reasonable amount of padding, let's try 110 and give it a build and run. And let's see what we end up with. Well, right now we ended up with a error apparently. So let's see what the heck I broke. So let's come back into here. And it looks like this is yelling at me because input view is seemingly a property on the base class. So it's saying, hey, you can't use this, you need to override it. So I'll call it search input view. And let's just change the name everywhere else so it doesn't decide to yell at me. All right, let me build. Looks like we're successfully able to build and let's give it a run. All right, cool. So we've got this pink looking, well, I feel like it's more of a red, but we've got this pink looking view at the top here and we can start sticking in stuff inside of this, i.e. our dynamically created buttons, which we need to do, uh, and our search bar. So the search bar will be constant, so we can at least start by creating that. So once more, we'll jump back to the search input view and let's add some comments to get some visual separation here. Now let's create some sub views. So you can use a UI text field, which allows you to enter text, but there's actually a more appropriate view you can use called a UI search bar, which actually looks like a search bar and it gives you some other 
uh, interesting tidbits that we'll look at momentarily, some functionality that otherwise we would have to kind of make ourselves. So we'll create a search bar here. We'll say search bar translates auto resizing mask into constraints, false. And let me go ahead and just do search bar dot placeholder. What a surprise, it's gonna be search. Inside of here, we're gonna say add sub views, plural, will be search bar. And let's call add constraints, which we stuck down here. And let me just add some constraints to this guy. We'll do search bar dot top anchor will be a constraint equal to top anchor with maybe a padding of five. I'm just gonna copy and paste this a few times. Left, same deal. Right, same deal, except we want this to be negative five. If you ever wondered why it's negative, um, the right anchor in this case, well, let me actually fix these first before it yells at me. The right anchor in this case would be off to the right of the view. So for example, if I say like, if I have a comment of left, our you know view is here and the right side, we're basically saying, hey, touch the edge of the right anchor or otherwise known as the uh, trailing and then subtract five, like move five back. Um, I know this used to confuse me like seven or eight years back when I first started dealing with this stuff when auto layout first came out. So I'm just calling that out in case I'm not the only one. So let me also go ahead and say height anchor and this will be a constant and we'll do, let's try like 46. That sounds like a fun number. Let's go ahead and do that, build and run. And let's see what we get. Alrighty, so we can come to this. Cool, so it looks like we do have a search bar there um, that is an appropriate size. It appears to be a little thin in height. So maybe I'll do 52. Try that again. All right, I think it looks a little better. I can't even tell if it actually changed if I'm being honest. So let's let's do a little more. We'll do like 55, I'll subtract from the top padding, we'll do three. And I'm gonna start to get rid of, well, I'll leave the color there for now. Um, cool, so we have search at the top. It says search characters. In here we can t um, click and we rather tap and we'll get um, the keyboard to pop up. Right now when we tap search, like nothing happens. Um, same deal when we tap search uh, up here, nothing happens. Uh, but before we build out functionality, let's get these dynamic buttons to show up because I keep talking about them and I haven't really figured out how the heck I'm going to make them. So we do have a view model uh, for this particular search input view. And the way we should you know, appropriately do this is this view model should really kind of have the information about, you know, do we need to even show uh, options? And if we do, what do we need to show and how many of them? So I think I added a comment, if I can remember, in our search controller of what we're gonna have. So basically for our uh, dynamic option view, what we want to do is, and maybe actually it's not in here, it's right here. For our character, we wanna have two options for status and gender. In this case, we want none for episode. And for location, we just wanna have the option for a type. So let's see how we are going to go about doing this. So we configure this RM search view with a view model, which makes sense. And what I can do now is now that we have this view model in here, we wanna configure this search input view with a particular uh, view model of its own. So let's see what this guy has. This has a config on it. And a config in turn, I believe has a type on it, yep. It has a title and it has a type on it. So cool, let's come back here and let me jump into our search input view and we should jump into its appropriate view model and let's build out what we want in here. So the first thing we want to do is this needs to be initialized with the type that we are configuring for because that's how we'll figure out, you know, how many dynamic options are we gonna have, if any. This is going to be a rm search controller dot config dot type is what I'm looking for. And I think I need to put this in back ticks so it doesn't yell at me. And then what I want to do is we'll want to hang on to this inside here such that when we initialize this, we can say self dot type is type. And here we'll get to the fun part. So let me just add a marker here that these are public properties and functions. And the first one we'll have is uh, has dynamic options. And this one is kind of self-explanatory. What we are going to do is we're gonna switch on the type and we'll say in the case of characters, and let's see, this will be self.type maybe. Let me see if it'll auto-complete for me. 
So we'll say switch on self dot type and it wants to be annoying. So let's write it out by hand. In the case of characters as well as location, we'll return true. And in the case of episodes where we only want to allow the user to type in an episode name to look it up, i.e. there are no things to select dynamically, which is what we had here, we will actually say false. Uh, and actually, I think, yep, no, that's actually correct. So location and character uh, are both true and an episode is false. And let me actually copy and paste this into that uh, file so I don't have to keep going back. Let's actually go and do that just so we have it here. So now that we actually have this here, what I'll do is we want to say, okay, how many dynamic options do we have? Rather, what are those dynamic options? So perhaps we can do this in a more type safe way. So instead of using strings in an array, which is what I was about to do, I'm gonna create an enum in here called dynamic option. The first thing in here we'll have is status, we'll have a gender, and then I'll also have a, I guess instead of calling it type, we'll call it location type. Respectively, we're gonna have this be a raw value of string, and I'll just give this the uh, uppercase variant of the case, which is what we'll actually display. Here we'll have location type. And when we come down here, we can create another computed property. And what I can actually say is options, and this will be of type dynamic option. Once more, we're going to switch on self.type. And instead of combining these cases now, in this case, what I will do is we'll say case, and what did I just screw up location? And in this case, we'll return zero, or an empty array is what I should say more appropriately. In the character case, we're going to return status as well as gender is what you can pick. And in location, you can pick location type. So let me get rid of these comments. And our view can essentially leverage this data to somehow know like how many views to show below uh, the search bar. And We'll have to figure out what the best way to go about doing this is. We could do a variety of things. We can do a collection view, and let's say you end up wanna, you know, you end up wanting to extend this. It'll just be horizontally scrollable, or it could be like a button. But let's at least jump back into the view and figure out um, what we what we can actually go and do. And one other thing that I wanna wanna actually improve here is instead of just showing search in the search bar, it would be more helpful to do something along the lines of like enter like location name or episode name or something that's more um, specialized for the configuration we're in. So we'll go and say search placeholder text, which will be of type string. And I'm just gonna return something more appropriate here. So here will be character name, location name, and in this case, it'll be episode title. And let's jump back to our RM search input view. And once we configure with the view model, I can actually say our search bars dot placeholder text will be view model dot placeholder text or search placeholder text. And we also now have our dynamic options. So we'll want to go ahead and uh, leverage that. So let's think how we want to go about doing this. This video is kind of getting long, so maybe we'll we'll stub it out and then we'll build it in the next part. So. I think what we could do is instead of going down the rabbit hole of collection views, given how verbose it is to set it up, perhaps it would be smarter to just do a for loop over um, buttons since we only have either one or two options. Um, but we want to do it in a way where it looks nice, right? If we have two, we want them to be both 50% the width. And if we have only one, we want it to be 100% the width um, of this pink view, I might add. So. Let's, uh, let's actually think about this. So I will actually hang on to the view model here uh, locally in the global scope of this view. And essentially what we'll do is once we have this set, we will get the option. So I'll say first and foremost, uh, guard let view model is view model. Alrighty. And then what I'll do here is we'll say view model uh, has ambiguous layout, that is not what I want. Uh, what the heck did I call it? Something along the lines of uh, has options. Let me see, let's jump back into this. Ah, uh, this should be view model actually. And I think I called it something along the lines of, yep, has dynamic options. If we have dynamic options, 
we will get those options and those options will be view model dot dynamic options or options whatever the heck i call them okay and then we'll want to call a function i'll say create option selection views and then i'll just pass in said options and we'll create this function down here Alrighty, and once more this takes in options which will be our view model dot option enum that we had previously created and here what we're going to do is we are going to say for option in options we want to do something so before i go ahead and give this a run there's two things we're going to tweak one is let me get rid of the constant for the padding here i feel like it's smushing our field a little bit and i kind of don't like it and the other thing i want to do is actually pass in a view model we're not actually passing one in at the moment i'm going to drop the constant from the top as well and i'll make this a little taller perhaps um, but we're not actually calling this configure with uh, yet. So here, I will actually just say print out option dot raw value so we see something. We're creating this view in our RM search view. So now what we'll finally do is we will configure this with a view model. So in the initializer, I'll say this configure. We'll want to create one of these, and this will be the view model on here dot config dot type. So once again, this init that I've done kind of shorthand here. This is nothing more than a RM search input view, view model. So yeah, I think that should be good to go. Let's go ahead and give this a build and run and make sure we get our options printed out at the bottom. In the next video, we'll actually look at kind of just creating a button for uh, our for loop. So let me click into this for characters. Alrighty, we should see a print. I am not seeing a print, which is no bueno. Let's see why the heck that is. Alrighty, it's because we're not actually hanging on to the view model, so let me actually hang on to it. We should see character name here in our search field, which we do. And I, I realize I'm going through this kind of fast now to wrap up the video, so let's come into here. We'll come back here, and cool, it says we should have a button for status and gender selection, which is awesome. Let's go into locations here. Let's come into here. Now it's saying we should have a location type option, which is also great. And finally, for episodes, we should have nothing. Okay, that's also great. One last thing I'll mention here is if we don't have any options here, we probably want to change the height of this view, right? We don't want it to be a hard-coded height where the results show up farther down here because this is this will kind of just be wasted space once we actually get rid of this pink color. So keep that in mind. We'll adjust that as well. I'll actually leave a comment here myself to remember. So to do fix height of input view for episode with no options. That way we don't forget to do that. So that is all I've got for you guys in this video. Drop a like before clicking away. Let me know in the comments of what your approach would have been, if not a for loop and buttons. What do you think about collection views or any other uh, kind of ways you could think about building this? So let me know. Looking forward to see you guys in the next part. I'll catch y'all there.